Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy and this is Rosie Hardy Gardening and it's Q&A time. I've got a load of questions from you again. This is brilliant. Thank you so much for sending them in. Hi Rosie, love your videos. Really appreciate your Q&A sessions. Thank you. I have a number of cuttings over wintering. Napita salvia, rust and sage, they all look completely dead. I've been restricting water input, maybe a little bit too much. When should I think about increasing water and potting into a more suitable and nutritious compost? Um, do I need to wait for sign of growth in South Gloucestershire? Okay, so it's always um, a good idea to just double check that you've actually got roots on these plants before you start potting them on. So if they're in little plug cells or they're in smaller pots, just literally tip them out, see if you've got some lovely good white root on there. If you have, all well and good, and they should starting to now be showing some little signs at the base. They won't grow from the old growth. Cut off all that old growth. They don't need it anymore. And pot them up into, say, a nine centimetre pot, if that's what you want to go into. That's probably big enough with a little bit of feed in that compost and start watering them gently. Don't overwet them. Um, but they'll need some moisture to keep them going and getting them going. We're getting warmer nights now. We're getting a bit more sunshine. They should be getting going and they usually are very successful. The other thing you've asked is about, is it too late to plant out seeds such as ranunculus, which need winter vernalization? Do you know what? I always think it's worth a go. If you don't try and grow them, they're not going to grow. So just try it. You know, sometimes these things will grow anyway. Um, so, so go for it. Uh, I have approximately a 15 to 20 year old pampas grass around 1.5 meters across. We used to cut it back moderately severely over winter. However, the last four winters, because of privacy, uh, we have been leaving it and only cutting it slightly. What we have found is that the clumps are getting um, a dieback in the middle and therefore they're not really as good as they were. Do I need to go back to this hard cropping regime in the winter? Any other advance on pampas great maintenance? Pampas is a grass that naturally gets fired. So it grows in plains where there is an annual fire going through and therefore it gets burnt down to the ground every year. This firing and sort of cutting it back down stops in its tracks, gets it growing again, rejuvenating. And the ash that it then gets gives it a bit of uh, phosphate so that it then helps it with the growth. So yes, I'm afraid you should have been doing that uh, cutting back down on them and you need to get back to that. If they've got hollow dead bits in the middle, then you are going to have to try and get that out and give them a little bit of a rejuvenation cut through to try and help them to grow back through. I understand you need the privacy, but you also need the plants to grow well. So I think you've got to go back to that regime and especially the ones which are starting to die off in the middle. If you can, I mean, they sound really large clumps, you're not going to be able to lift them and split them. But what you can do is you can get rid of the dead that is in the center there. You can give them a slice through um, with a spade or something stronger than that, just to give a little bit of a root prune and a little bit of a shock tactic. And that will hopefully get them to grow back up again. Once you've done that, give them a water, give them a feed. Hope that helps you. Hi Rosie, could you give me some tips on preparing my flower borders? They always look a mess at this time of the year. Should I mulch them now or later? Now you haven't said where you are, but that doesn't really matter. Yes, at this time of the year, herbaceous borders, grass borders are all starting to look a little bit tatty. This is the time, it's spring, it's called spring cleaning. Go through the borders, cut back any of the dead foliage, find yourself, you've got lovely clumps, just get them all tidied up. Once you've tidied that, up, then yes, if you've had a good amount of rainfall, this is the time to put your mulch down. Do not put mulch down on dry ground. Your mulch needs to go down on wet ground and make sure you put a good three to four inches. That is 10 to 15 centimeters of mulch. It needs to be a thick mulch to create any difference whatsoever. So yes, go ahead tidy up everything, make it look good, bulbs will come through, all the fresh growth will come through. Try not to cover the crowns too much. That sometimes isn't that um, easy, but it is better if you don't cover the crowns too much underneath all of that, but they will push through. So carry on and get your mulching done. 
Do rusty tools harm plants or just decrease the life of the tool? Well, it's a combination actually. If your tools are not clean, you do not get such a good cut if they are snips or secateurs. Therefore, you get a really jagged uh, cut on things. So therefore, that is not good. So you need to have them clean from that point of view. Rusting on metalwork will always degrade it and you'll get pitting. So it is always a good idea to have your tools clean. This will also be the same with your spades, um, your shears, your um, forks, anything like that. Yes, if you um, leave them rusty, it isn't going to harm so much when you dig into the ground so much, but you are not keeping your tools for the length of time that they should keep going. So a clean tool is much, much better for use in the garden. What's a good seed starting mix or product? So you want to be using for seeds or cuttings a specific product that is for seed and cutting mixes. Something which has got coir in it is very, very good. And something, if you're in the UK, then fertile fiber seed and cutting mix is very good for that sort of thing. So that is what you're looking out for. This one's about a lilac. My neighbor cut his lilac from eight foot to four foot, so reduced it half the height, then asked me if I thought it was too much. And I told him my knowledge was nil on lilacs. Did he cut them down too much or will they recover? All I see are bare trunks, so I don't know. We're in zone 7A, Rhode Island, US. Right, so lilacs are resilient, but it does depend on the time of year that you actually did the cutting back. So cutting back and pruning of lilacs should be done after flowering because they flower on that seasons so once you cut them back they grow that new season's growth is what they will flower on the following year so if you've gone and done it in the autumn you've cut off all of the flowering growth for the following season you can be hard with lilacs but it is best to do them over a two-year cycle whereby you take half of the wood right the way down so not halfway you take it right the way down to about 10 inches um, 30 centimeters 25 30 centimeters leaving half up and just giving that a uh, prune round to give it a good shape and then the following season the ones that you didn't cut back you cut those ones back down and you have the new growth coming through with lots of flower and that is the way to maintain them and stop them getting too straggly and too big i hope that helps and i hope you can pass that on to your neighbor during the winter, we get all of the year's rain at once. I'd like to grow some hardy annuals, but weeks and weeks of cold, wet soil, it seems insurmountable. Thoughts on some flowers that won't mind? Well, to be honest, half, uh, hardy annuals, it doesn't actually matter when you sow them. They can be sown in the autumn or they can be sown in the spring. And if you sow them just a fraction later than you think you should because the conditions are correct, they will catch up. So I wouldn't worry too much. So things like calendula, nigellas, all of those really tough old hardy annuals will be absolutely fine if you just wait until the soil's a little bit drier, the sun has come out, it's a bit warmer, sow them and you'll be amazed at how well they will grow and do well for you. I have a group of helianthemums that got really leggy with lots of dead wood in the center. I cut them back hard in autumn. Will they revive or should I consider replanting new specimens? Thank you. You need to give them time to revive because if you have cut them back, the helianthemums can get really straggly and leggy with all of your greenery and flowers at the end and a brown center. If you've gone and cut right the way back to the center there, that has to have time to rejuvenate and come through. Um, usually that will happen end of March, beginning of April. If it doesn't happen then, then yes, you will need to lift them, remove them and get some new ones. Um, they should be given a hard cut back most years. Don't allow them to get too leggy because they, they just will try and do it. So if you can give them a bit of a prune, usually I would say giving them something of a prune in August so they have time to rejuvenate and come back with some fresh growth that autumn. That will then be your greenery through the winter. That will then flower in the spring and then you can give them another cut back later on. That way you're giving them two haircuts a year, but it means that you keep them from getting straggly. Thank you for your videos, Rosie. 
I had to stop growing lupins for a few years as every year they were getting demolished by lupin aphids. I'd love to grow them again. Have you got any tips on how I might avoid and manage this? Thank you. The lupin aphid, if people don't know, is really huge. It's a big thing. You can see it very obviously and it just sucks the life out of lupins and it's a really bad thing for them. I would suggest if you're going to try and grow lupins again, try them in a container rather than out in the ground. That way you're more likely to see them and you're more likely to catch the lupin aphid before it really starts to take hold. Making sure that those lupins are very well fed and well watered is key to growing them well. They are hungry and thirsty beasties. So make sure you do that with them. A liquid feed when you water is the best way of doing it. If you see the aphids on there and there are only a few, squash them. Otherwise, if you've got more than that, high pressure hose, that will douse them off or you can use a little bit of soapy water and that will also get rid of them. But just keep an eye on it and that's the best way to do it. So vigilance with them, keeping them well fed, keeping them well watered. Odd question. But if transplanting or moving established plants like honeysuckle, can you root prune in any way regarding larger roots, etc., as you can't always get them out with the main root ball? And can this be done with perennials or shrubs? I, I know it's an odd question, but it's been on my mind for a while. Root pruning works really, really well with herbaceous perennials. So you can dig up a herbaceous perennial, you can chop the roots back, you can plant them back out, take the tops down a bit, absolutely no problem at all. They're keen to put on new growth. With shrubs, you should be moving shrubs when they're dormant. So if they're deciduous and they've lost their leaves, that's absolutely fine. But if they are a large shrub, then you should have prepared that the previous season by digging around the outside of the shrub to make a large root ball so that you've chopped through certain roots and then you can put compost back in. They will then grow more fibrous root and then in the following autumn, you should be able to lift and maybe just have to cut a few of the bigger roots at the base, but always make sure you do a big root ball and then bring them forward. So it can work, but you need to do the preparation work the year before starting that root pruning job and getting them to regrow. Making sure that if that is what you're doing, that you make sure that those plants don't get under stress when it's hot weather, so you water them and you give them a little bit of food. I hope that helps you. I've inherited some grow lights from my late father that have a violet glow. Why do gardeners UV use UV lights? UV light is good for young plant growth. So the UV light tends to be used on young seedlings, young uh, cuttings, etc. to help. And there is an added sunlight replacement. So that is why it tends to get used. However, nowadays you get new grow lights and the newer grow lights are a complete mixed spectrum. And you will see some of them are uh, glow uh, almost red, they're sort of pinky glow. Some are the blue at end of the spectrum and some are your normal sunlight type sections. And they will alter depending on what time of day it is. So they are much better than the older lights. But if you want to use the older ones, then they're mainly used for your seedlings to help with the growth, especially in the early part of the spring when the day length is not as long. I have a brown turkey fig growing in a large 20 inch pot. Can't plant it in the ground and can't deal with a bigger pot. I'm an older person. So my question is, should I be taking it out and root pruning it and putting in fresh soil? It's been at least six years and seems okay, but not growing much. Thank you for any advice. I would say yes. So if you're gonna take it out of the pot and prune its roots and then put it back in with some compost, which has slow release fertilizer in it, and then you have got it back in there, keeping it nicely moist, but not too wet. I would also give it a prune on the top growth because you've reduced the amount of root it has. So therefore it can't support all of the top growth that it probably has there. So take a third of the older growth out and allow the growth that's left there to get all the benefit of the new compost that it has there and the plant should then grow on and produce figs for you for many years to come. Should I cut down the leaves of geums come the spring? 
They, some of them looking very lush, but it covers the spring bulbs. Thank you. Right, so with the geums, you've got some older leaves, you've got some newer leaves coming through. They, all they want to do is grow. So my answer to you there is yes, by all means, cut off all the old stuff, give it a really good tidy up, probably cut some of the good green leaves to about six inches, somewhere around about 15 centimeters. Just tidy the whole thing up. It will appreciate having any dead stuff taking out because then that limits the amount of a mess that is in there and the new leaves come out and actually get to see the light. It will then flower better for you. All of that old growth is then out of the way. You can enjoy your bulbs. When the bulbs go back, the geums are coming back up and flowering nicely for you. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.